Hey, in this video we're going to talk about encrypting your email with PGP. If you Google for that, those three words, scroll down, you'll find a life hacker article. I highly recommend you read that. Um, but anyway, let's get started by jumping into a story. I used to believe that if you transmitted information over the internet or over any unsecured, unsafe environment, uh, anyone could see it no matter how you encrypted the stuff unless you went out of the band it's so like say maybe snail mailed uh, an encryption code or a decryption code rather it turns out you can have security over the internet and the way this is done is with asymmetric key encryption uh, so let me set you up at, with the example and this is how PGP works um, First, I'm going to create two keys. I'm going to create a private key and a public key. So just pretend that using PGP, I just created these two keys. I, I made a public key and a private key. I generate them at the same time, kind of. So there, there is an association between the two. They interact with each other, sort of. Now, if Fred up here has a cool message and I want him to send it to me, but I don't want the whole world to know what it says, I'll say to Fred, hey, Fred, here's my public key. I show this to pretty much everybody, but I'm showing it to you specifically because I want you to encrypt that document before sending it. And then Fred's like, all right, I'll encrypt it. So he takes your public key, he encrypts his message, and it says something like, hello, so and so forth. And, and the second he encrypts that message with the public key, Fred has no way of decrypting that message. He can't find out what he just encrypted even though he has the original text the original message I think that's really interesting um, so then Fred sends down that message and then I get to take my private key and decrypt that message I'm the only person in the world who knows my private key and if it doesn't remain that way it's not secure so <laughs> I use my private key and then I see his message that's how public keys uh, public private key works um, and then if I want to send something to Fred, well, he's got to generate his own key pair and then send me his public key. Then I'll encrypt my messages with his key. That's how it works. And I strongly recommend anybody in any business setting to use this um, technology um, to secure their emails. So to, to make this happen, to install it, I'm on a Windows machine. I'm, I happen to be on Windows 7. Um, uh, but to make this happen, I'm going to use a mail client called Thunderbird. And Mozilla makes this thing. And it's for Windows or Mac OS X or Linux. Anybody can have fun. Nobody's left out of the party. So uh, just do a Google for Thunderbird. The first hit is mozilla.org slash Thunderbird. That's the thing. And there's my octopus. I like that octopus. Now we scroll down. We see a big green button. Go ahead and click that and make it download. You'll see a dialog like this. Save it and make a note of where you save it to. It'll probably want you to put it in like um, a downloads folder or something like that just so you know. Uh, keep track of where you put that file. It, that's important. Then while that's downloading uh, we're gonna do another Google search for uh, a plugin for Thunderbird. So we take, we got Thunderbird, a mail client, and it just lets us send mail and receive mail. It's, there's nothing fancy about it, no encryption yet. Then we get a plugin for it called Enigmail. Okay, now Enigmail is where things get cool. Uh, Google for Enigmail, choose the download link right below the first hit, and uh, and then if you scroll on your way down, Enigmail, their web page will say, Enigmail does not install GNUPG for you. You have to do that yourself. So go ahead and click that link. Ugh. Open it in a new window. Don't be like me. And then you scroll down and you'll find where it says Project GPG for Windows. Since we're on a Windows machine, we'll click that project. Okay. Uh, but if you're on Mac, you would choose GPG Tools. And on Linux, I'm pretty sure it's de uh, defaulted. So once you click that link, you got a nice big sh green shiny button 
and you click the shiny button and then you scroll down and then you want the full installer so jo just go ahead and click that and it'll start downloading to a location then back up and remember we have to get Enigmail the plugin still because we're just getting a dependency for this thing so scroll down a little bit and it'll say what is your operating system it should default to the correct spot but maybe it won't but choose Windows 32-bit in my case and what version of Thunderbird are you going to be using? It's We're downloading the latest version 17, so click leave that where it is, and then click where it says download in Mail 1.5, and that will get us uh, cooking with gas.